So what are basic types of filters? Uh, we've been discussing it, uh, discussing uh, over and over again that you have four different types of filter, low pass, uh, that lets low frequencies go through it and stop the high frequencies. Uh, high pass, which let um, high frequencies go through it and stop the low frequencies. Band pass, which let a band of frequencies go through it uh, and band stop or band reject, which stops a band of frequencies. Uh, so in digital, uh, when you're designing digital filter, basically this is um, a general response of a low pass filter. So you have three bands you have a pass band which is considered as the band through which all the frequencies are going to pass and this band is from 0 to omega p omega p is the normalized pass band frequency then you have a transition band that the filter is transitioning from the pass band to the stop band where all the frequencies will be stopped now some frequencies still pass through transition band if the slope is not very steep if the slope is very steep, if it goes like this, right, then of course most of the frequencies are going to be stopped and the pass, whatever frequencies uh, are passing through pass band will, pay, will be passed and rest of the frequencies will be stopped. But if your slope is not very steep, then you will have still some frequencies passed through the transition band, although those frequencies uh, will be uh, attenuated. And of course in the stop band, the frequencies are going to be stopped. So there are some parameters when you're designing a filter, you have to consider some of the parameters. Uh, omega P, which is the pass band uh, cutoff frequency. Omega S, which is the stop band cutoff frequency, where the stop band starts. A transition band is between omega S and omega P. And you have uh, delta P and delta S. So delta P is called the pass band ripple and delta s is called the stop band ripple so in general in the digital filters you have some ripples in the pass band and a stop band uh, and then of course you have a transition uh, based on the uh, what you call the uh, order of the filter order of the filter means uh, what is the highest power of z the more power of z you have the higher the order of the filter uh, if i give you analog um, a filter comparison the more capacitors and inductors that you're gonna have or just capacitors uh, you, your your um, differential equation associated with that uh, circuit will be higher order differential equation and your filter is going to be higher order filter now there are advantages of using higher order filter the transition band is uh, has a very steep slope uh, but in general, in digital filters, I think um, you will see uh, that if you are designing a higher order filter, your transition band is going to be steep, but you will have, uh, in general, more fluctuation in the pass band and a stop band. And we will try to uh, rectify those fluctuations. In chapter number seven, we will discuss the window methods that you have used in chapter four, I think. And you're gonna use window method again to uh, remove these fluctuations, so you will see. Uh, it's going to become uh, smoother uh, but in general for a higher order filter you have some fluctuation more fluctuation in the stop band and pass band but your transition band is very narrow uh, okay so the second type of filter uh, is um, your high pass filter uh, and it's the opposite of low pass filter um, again you have the same parameters you have the pass band ripple you have the stop band ripple uh, stop band transition band and pass band of course the pass band is going to be the last band where all the frequencies can pass and stop band is the first band again you have first the stop band cutoff frequency represented by omega s and you have omega p um, pass band cutoff frequency now again if these frequencies are um, are given in uh, the frequency scale f then first you have to convert uh, you know if if it is given to you that let's say fs is one kilohertz right then you have to first calculate, let's say, omega s, which is, uh, what was that, uh, 2 pi, uh, 2 pi, uh, this is a stop band, so I put down a stop, st, stop, because of course s is also represented by sampling frequency. So 2 pi f st over f of s, right? So first you're gonna calculate the, um, the corresponding a stop band for if, if f of 
a stop given to you <clears throat> let's say it is given to you that a stop cutoff frequency is one kilohertz and the um, uh, sampling frequency is eight kilohertz then of course you're going to calculate calculate the corresponding normalized stop bend frequency cutoff that's going to be two pi times one kilohertz over eight kilohertz or two pi over eight or pi over four that's going to be uh, this value over here um, so most of the time when we are dealing with filters of course we are dealing in hertz uh, but if you have to convert hertz into radians that is the normalized uh, frequency then you can always use the relationship to go from um, you know frequencies to omega or omega to frequency all right the third type of filter is the pass band filter in the pass band filter you have one pass band you have two transition bands and you have two stop bands as you can see you have on the lower side omega sl omega pl they are the lower side stop band and pass band cutoff and omega ph and omega sh are is the higher side or upper side um, pass band and um, stop band and the same thing is a band reject filter or band stop filter you have one stop band you have two pass bands and two transition bands and you have uh, two sets of um, uh, cutoff frequencies one on the lower side of the stop band and one on the upper side of the stop band so these are four different type of filters and um, when you are, uh, we discussed of course earlier how to determine the frequency response in MATLAB, the six steps that um, I gave you. There is also a function in MATLAB which is called frequency Z or freak Z. And what freak Z um, uh, does is it generates basically the value of H of EJ omega. This is H, this H is EJ omega at these omega values. So this is omega right here. Okay. So if you're using this function, basically B is the coefficient of the numerator of H of C. A is coefficient of denominator of H of C. And N is the number of points that you want to plot from 0 to pi pi of course it's zero pi is correspond to omega so again if you plot 100, 100 points 101 point you just have to put down that number over here 100 you have to put down b you have to put down a um, and then use freak of c is going to calculate uh, the h and uh, it's going to give two vectors output h which will be h of ej omega and uh, omega that will be the points at which it evaluated the values of h from 0 to pi it divide the whole interval into 100 points and those points will be recorded in the vector h okay and in the again in the um, fourth uh, project in the second part of the fourth project i'm asking you to use freak of freak z to calculate h of g omega uh, and then i'm asking you to cal to use filter function to determine y of n and plot that the output of the filter and then plot that for an input so that's the second part of your project all right and this finishes up the free uh, the discussion of this last topic come on don't tell me it didn't record again